What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits. Today, I am gonna be testing out the Plex Media Player and its ability to run on a micro PC from Azul and a multifunctional remote. Alrighty, just like I said in the intro, today I am testing out the Plex Media Player on a small PC stick. Okay, so as you know on this channel, I do like to centralize around Plex Media servers and Plex clients. So when I was contacted about testing out this little PC stick, I was a little excited. I mean, I like the idea of HTPCs. What I don't necessarily like is having a large HTPC over by my entertainment area. Now, I know there's plenty of builds out there that you can get with, you know, small form factor, you know, PC cases and ITX motherboards and all kinds of things that you can do. And, and one of these days, I'm going to build that. But until then, it's simple devices like these that are pre-made, easy to use, and easy to plug in and keep out of the way. And the biggest thing to me is not only the PC stick, but also the remote. And this is something sold by the same company, Azul. I'm pretty sure I... Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm saying that right, A-Z-U-L-L-E. But they sell this multifunctional remote that not only has the basic Windows functions and, a, and, a, and an air mouse that you can use to kind of navigate through things, but it also has a built-in keyboard. So that's pretty cool. I mean, last time I used an HTPC, or at least tested out with my clients, I uh, had a small Intel little NUC thing and I just used a wireless keyboard and mouse. It wasn't very user friendly, but I didn't have another remote. So this is a pretty interesting addition. But I'll get back to talking about this later. For now, I wanna kinda talk about some of my first impressions on this device. So this is the Azul Access Plus Fanless Windows 10 Mini, Mini PC Stick. Uh, it has a quad core 1.44 gigahertz processor, boost up to 1.84 gigahertz. Uh, it's the Intel Cherry Trail T3Z8300 processor. Uh, it has a four gigabytes of DDR3 RAM and 32 gigabytes of built-in storage. It does come with Windows 10 already pre-installed and that's pretty much it. It's got an Atom processor, Windows 10 built-in and supposedly just fits right in behind your TV. Now, I know prices like to fluctuate on electronics, so rather than quote a price like I do in the past, I will just link this in the bottom in the description uh, so you can check that out to see how much it costs. But I can tell you it is a little bit more expensive than things like the Fire TV or Fire TV Stick uh, or other simple solutions that you can buy for TVs. However, the benefit that you get from being able to run the full Plex Media Player uh, it might be worth it. Not only that, you also get a fully functional computer that you can use for other things. Okay, so starting from scratch, when I got this thing plugged in, of course I had to go through and hook up and set up Windows 10. Uh, it's already installed, but I just had to configure it and get logged in for the first time. After that, I immediately went in and downloaded the Chrome browser because I hate Microsoft Edge. And then I navigated over to the Plex.tv website and downloaded the Plex Media Player. And this is where my first impressions were a little rough because um, I didn't really take into consideration that it had to update. So when I went in and I downloaded the Plex Media Player application, I tried to play a test file, it would not play for anything. I mean, it was skipping, it wasn't keeping up, the audio was garbage. I mean, it was just a terrible experience and I was about ready to just pack it back up and send it back to the provider. And then I find out that it was actually updating in the background. So just word to the wise, if you do get a, uh, anything like this, maybe not this exact one, but any kind of mini PC with Windows 10 built in and it's a fresh install, just make sure and go through and run the updates and just make sure that's all finished before you try to test it out. I know it's kind of obvious, but I was in a hurry and I was really excited. So anyways, I got it updated, I went back in and I started testing it and it worked better. I was able to play videos, I went in and I tested out a wedding video that I was uh, uh, demoing for a client. Uh, then I went through and I think I played Shrek and everything seemed to work pretty well. However, I started running into issues after I was watching it for about 10 to 15 minutes. And those kind of issues were the video was skipping, the audio was just fine, but the video was kind of skipping around, kind of like it was, you know, dropping a large amount of frames. And overall it was just not watchable. I mean, the audio was okay, but the video was just crap. So maybe thinking on my part that there was something to do with the performance because it is an Atom processor and I was playing some 1080p content. Uh, it was about a 10 megabit file with surround sound. I started thinking maybe it just doesn't have the processing power to handle it. So after that, I went through and I just gutted Windows 10. You know, I went through and decrapified all the crap that they put on there. You know, the telemetry and the little add-ons, I uninstalled those crap programs that I'm never gonna use on this device. And then I changed the performance settings in Windows 10 to be high performance and low aesthetics because who cares about that crap if I'm watching Plex? 
So with all those put in play, I figured, hey, maybe I'm good to go. I launched this back up, started it again after I reset the device, and it played great for like 20 or 30 minutes, and then it was right back to where I was the first time around. So after that, I started thinking, I mean, what the hell is wrong with this thing? I mean, it should be able to play just fine, right? Now, I did have it hooked up to Wi-Fi, but it was only four feet away from my wireless router. And this is the same wireless router. Right now, I'm running the ACS3200 from Linksys. This, I mean, this router is a stout router. It can handle anything I've ever thrown at it. So I was pretty confident that it wasn't my wireless network or the router. And of course, if you guys know the server that I run with Zeus, it's more than capable of providing any media to anything in my house 10 times over. So the next thing that I did to test something out since I was already really close to my router is I plugged in the ethernet cable. And then after that, I started up Plex, started playing a video file, and not only were the menus and the loadings and everything more snappy and just more responsive overall, but I ended up watching the rest of Shrek without any hiccups, any slowdowns, any issues whatsoever. In fact, I was able to fast forward and rewind almost instantaneously, and it was just a beautiful experience. Now that just makes me think, I mean, okay, this is a great device. It runs the Plex Media Player fairly smoothly. I did make some tweaks to the Windows 10 operating system that I might not have had to make. However, if anybody is gonna get into something like this, I would definitely recommend decrapifying Windows 10, gutting it out, and making sure it's running as optimal as possible so you're not wasting resources. However, in the end, the Wi-Fi on this device just doesn't seem to be able to keep up with you know larger video files. So to test everything out again, I went back, I unplugged the Ethernet cable, rehooked up the Wi-Fi network, restarted the Plex Media Player, and started the Shrek app, the, the Shrek video that I was playing. And instead of playing it at full quality, I just downsampled it or I, I lowered the quality to two megabits per second. So the transcoding was happening on my server, sending a lower bitrate file to the actual device, and it played perfectly. So as great as this device is, that just tells me one thing. The Wi-Fi card in this thing is just not powerful enough to keep up, which is kind of weird because I ran a speed test on it and I was able to get about 60 megabits per second. So I have no idea why it was unable to keep up with the media streaming uh, when I was running on Wi-Fi. Of course, when I plugged in the ethernet cable and ran the same speed test, the speeds were through the roof, but the Wi-Fi network was just a little limited. But again, I don't really understand completely why that wouldn't be able to keep up with it. It's kind of mind boggling on my end. Uh, I would think if it can handle 50 megabits a second, it should be able to handle a 10 megabit file. Um, but that's where we are. Plex Media Player just couldn't stay, uh, keep up. So if you're looking for a small HTPC to run the Plex Media Player and you want something simple, relatively uh, affordable, and it's all kind of like an all-in-one device, this could be a solution. Uh, it would take a little bit of tweaking and a wired connection to get the best use out of it, um, but I've been using this thing for about a week, and so far it's been a really solid device. I'm not sure if the performance things that I changed and the decrapifying of Windows 10 played a major role in that. That was just one step in my you know, troubleshooting and getting things to work. Uh, it wasn't until the ethernet cable was plugged in that everything was resolved. So I'm not sure if that's something that you'd have to do in order to get it working up and running uh, correctly but I would definitely recommend doing it either way. Other than that, this is a pretty capable device. It does come with two USB ports, a micro USB charger, uh, an ethernet cable that I mentioned before, and you can even use one of those little laptop locks right here uh, just to lock it and make sure nobody runs away with it. So if you wanna install it somewhere in a public place or somewhere you don't trust people, that's an option. And it does have a headphone jack. But the coolest thing is that you can plug this thing into anything with an HDMI port. So it's very versatile. You can take it anywhere you want, hook it up to computer monitors or TVs or whatever you want to do. But enough about this device, let's talk about the remote because I was pretty excited about getting that. This is the Azul Multifunctional Remote. Now it's called the Link uh, PC Multifunctional Remote Control. It's got a pretty basic box, nothing too much to look at. But this thing is crazy because it's compatible with so many things. Android OS, Windows, Macs, I mean, it's, it's compatible with a lot. And it's got this cool little mouse button, it's an air mouse. So basically, once you push this, this is gonna be your primary uh, uh, key click if you want, your left key click, but it just works like this. Like you just move it down, up, left, right, and you can kind of go through the screens. Now, it's a little funky getting used to. I can, I'll admit that it was a little, little funky getting used to, but once I figured out how to use it and I kind of got used to doing it and I got in kind of a, a relaxed position, like for example, if I was sitting here, I'd be kind of like sitting it on my, uh, on my knee. It was easy to use, although it did fumble around a little bit, just kind of getting used to it. So. 
it's kind of an interesting device. Uh, it does give you the, the ability to use a full-fledged mouse with Windows uh, or Mac or whatever you have it hooked up to. Just one of those things, you plug in the USB device, it automatically recognizes it. Although, just as a side note, I'm being completely honest here, I did plug in the USB device into this when I was trying to set up Windows 10 and I couldn't get it to recognize. I was trying to mess with it and I was like thinking I did something wrong, but I went behind the, you know, my TV and unplugged the USB and plugged it back in and then it recognized it instantly. So I'm not really sure what that was, but just knowing it out there. Okay, so if you're setting a lot of things up, like for example, you're going through the initial setup of the Windows 10 and you want to download and update and, and you know get everything ready for an HTPC, uh, you can do probably something like what I did where I just went in, I downloaded TeamViewer, and then I set it up remotely from my main computer. And this is basically because you're going through, you're clicking and you're, you're trying to aim it, and it's just, you're, you're able to do it, it just takes longer than what you would if you were using a regular mouse. As for the keyboard, that's, that's kind of a mixed opinion on my part because the keyboard is fully functional and it's nice. I mean, you can go through and you can type in anything you want, but the keys are kind of squishy and it takes a little bit to push it in. So some of the things that I found when I was holding it, trying to push it in hard enough for it to recognize that I'd actually end up accidentally clicking the back of it, like trying to give myself some you know pressure there. So, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta kind of learn how to hold it and make sure that you're not pushing behind it. You kind of have to get used to that. And sometimes when you're pushing in, you just, you don't get it hard enough. So you're going through and you're pushing as hard as you can, not as hard as you can, but you're pushing pretty hard in order just to get the keys to register. Um, it is, again, that's another one of those learning curve things because at first I was kind of clunking through it, trying to get it to work, kind of getting a little frustrated that it wasn't working, but once I got used to typing on it, it was actually pretty easy. But it does light up. You got this little button right here that does light up on the side. This lights up the front or the back, depending on how you have it oriented. Another thing that is kind of cool though, it says it has, I personally didn't test because that was part of my disabling, was it does have a microphone so you can pull up you know, uh, audio commands. Like for example, for some reason you want to keep Cortana on Windows 10, you could push this little button and you can talk into it and, and do your searching or you know, whatever with it. Now, one thing I do wish that's, that this remote had, instead of just having this play pause button, I wish they would use some of the space down here to give it full media controls. I mean, we're talking play, pause, stop, fast forward, rewind, just, you know, three, you know, four buttons down here just for full media control. It has everything else. I mean, you can go home or whatever, and you can pull up the on-screen keyboard and a click. I mean, it has a lot of features, I just wish that if this was going to be geared towards somebody who maybe is going to be using an HTPC and wants a fully functional remote control with a keyboard, that it would have some basic media functions down here other than a play and pause button. But anyways, with some of the wishes that I have, it's still a pretty good remote. I think it's pretty cool that it's compatible with so much. You know, the Mac OS, Linux, Windows. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's got a lot of ability to it. Just a few things that I wish I would have hit on more, but I'm actually pretty excited to use this as a daily driver. I, I'm really tired of plugging in wireless keyboards and mice just to be able to you know, type stuff in and, and use the desktop and be able to search for things. So even though this is not as usable, obviously, as a full-fledged keyboard, it's definitely very convenient. And since it doesn't require line of sight, I think it's 2.4 gigahertz. I don't remember, but it's wireless. It's similar to Bluetooth functionality. It might be Bluetooth, but um, it doesn't require any kind of line of sight. Uh, and it has some pretty good distance. I was able to use it hooked up to the TV back here, all the way over there in my computer room. I was testing out and it was still working just fine. So uh, it's got good range, got good usability. It responds pretty well. Overall, I think it's a pretty good device. And the great thing here, again, I'll link this into the description, but I'm pretty sure this thing was only $29.99, 30 bucks. So that's pretty cheap for a full keyboard and mouse that you can use with an HTPC. Just like the other HTPCs that I've tested, this was able to put through full surround sound using True HD or DTS. Uh, I didn't have any issues, any issues with that. I plugged it into the back of my receiver, so I was able to get that full surround sound. Um, and that's just like any like that other Intel NUC that I tested. I mean, it's it's fully functional, fully capable, fully developed software by Plex, and th that's basically. I mean, this is what they built it for. Everything else is like a side gig for them. You know, if they get it working on the Xbox One, it's a side thing. If they get it working on Android, it's a side thing. But having it running on a desktop application, that Plex Media Player, that's like their their meat and potatoes. You know, that's what they really focus all their, a lot of their develop on. So. Uh, that's why I like using the Plex Media Player because it is so fully functional and has every feature available and supports all of the right formats. And it, I mean, it's just a great experience. And that's why I was interested in something like this because I can get that experience in a small, low-power device 
with a remote control that can control it really easily. So again, guys, if you wanna check out these devices, I will link them in the description below. You can see current pricing and the specs for it if you wanna read a little bit more up on it. But in the end, it was a pretty good Plex Media Player. However, I wish it would have had a little bit better Wi-Fi performance. That way in those certain applications where you don't have the ability to run a wire to it, you would be able to get better performance out of it. That's it for today though, guys. If you like this video, like and subscribe below. Thank you for watching and have a great day.